Good afternoon everyone. I'm wanting to share with you this afternoon the focus of the month for April. In Jiva Mukti Yoga we have a new focus of the month written by a senior teacher around the world and this month the focus is written by Sharon Gannon, the co-founder of the method um, who lives very well in New York. She's written a focus called The Crown of Creation and it's incredibly thought-provoking. The focus of the month is usually relevant and contextual to anything that might be going on around the world. In Jiva Mukti Yoga we do have a lot of focuses about environmental activism, animal rights activism and wildness and how it relates to yoga and life. So this one is Called the crown of creation and of course uh, we're talking and studying coronavirus and Sharon gives us the spiritual implications of this so she offers us song lyrics um, from a song by John Robbins called is this a bridge if we had the consciousness to see the impact of our choices on our greater world which is our greater heart then we would see that we are more a part of life on this earth than our society allows us to realize we're part of each other's dreams depth and prayer we're part of each other's aspirations and needs we're part of each other's fulfillment if we want to reduce the level of fear in society in ourselves in our bodies and nervous systems it is all the same process we would have to question all the things that we do our very daily lives. One thing that the environmental movement has brought forth is the recognition of how interwoven we are with the natural world. What we do to forests, we do what we do to oceans, the rivers, the great biospheres, eventually we do to ourselves. If we poison the air, we poison ourselves. And when we grasp the degree to which we are interrelated and interconnected, with all of life, we start to be a vehicle for life itself. Rather than a skin encapsulated ego, a small self narrowly trying to find our way. With the benefit of information, all of the wisdom of experience that we can tune into, we can expand our higher self, our real self with a capital S, our true nature. Sharon writes, Coronavirus is a zoonotic disease, meaning the virus jumped from animals to humans. The stress of confinement suffered by trapped and enslaved animals is known to bring about pathologies. We know this from past pandemics. Mutations allow diseases to jump species. Tuberculosis and swine flu were originally diseases found in pigs. Influenza came from avarian bird flu, Horsepox mutated into smallpox, bovine rinderpest became measles, Crutzenfeldt Jacobs disease is the human equivalent of mad cow disease. The 2003 SARS pandemic, like today's COVID-19, is thought to have been transmitted by bats. Many scientists think that AIDS spread to humans through bushmeat. In fact, the 2014 Ebola outbreak originating in Africa was to was believed to be caused by eating bushmeat too. Bushmeat refers to any species of wild animals, including bats, antelopes, monkeys, snakes, and rats. Isn't it way beyond time that we stop eating animals, stop trapping them, stop putting them in cages, stop confining them to dark warehouses, feedlots, and barns, stop breeding them as commodities, stop slaughtering them by the billions every year worldwide when someone says that if other people's other people choose to eat animals that it is their choice their business well with this recent coronavirus outbreak the chinese animal markets have become our business too anywhere where animals are being used and abused should be our business animal enslavement exploitation and abuse are happening everywhere in every country on land and sea it has formed the basis of our global economy since the first stock markets. 
Yes, it is a good step for China and other countries to close down the live markets dealing with buying, selling and slaughtering on site of wild animals, but this will not eradicate the underlying cause. Putting blame on wild animals for carrying the coronavirus and wanting all bats to be exterminated is another example of our civilization's war against Mother Nature, an extension of our fear of all things wild while establishing our human superiority over other beings. Blaming others is never a valid solution. To point the finger of blame on China or some other place is to ignore what we are also doing all over the world, confining animals in farms and cages. The difference is that we keep them drugged and hidden from the public. Even with the heavy doses of antibiotics prescribed by the USDA and other health organisations that regulate agribusiness, overcrowded factory farms and slaughterhouses are breeding grounds for disease, including parasites, bacteria and viruses, along with new and emerging pa pathogens that are antibiotic resistant. Slaughterhouses and farms are not clean places and certainly not kind places. They are places of fear and violence. Animals are vulnerable, stressed, sick, and filled with fear. Remember the swine flu, a global pandemic in 2010, killing hundreds of thousands of people across the globe, but because of its connection to domesticated pigs and animal agribusiness, it was largely obscured from the public. We can learn from reflection about the, upon the past, but still, the big question is, what do we do now? Do we, as individuals, shirk responsibility and continue to blame and complain? Do we live in fear and angrily demand that our government leaders take care of the solution and find the, of the situation? Do we turn a blind eye and party hard? Do we wash our hands and hold toilet paper? Do we hope that scientists quickly figure out a solution and give us a vaccine, enabling us to go back to our normal, unsustainable lives until the next pandemic arrives? Is fear, anger and blame justified? Can it really help? As yogis, we are committed to purifying our actions so as to cause the least amount of harm to others. Whatever we do to others will come back to us. So our own health, happiness and liberation is dependent on how we treat others. All of life is interdependent. What each of us does affects everyone. No one of us can be truly happy by causing unhappiness to others, other animals and the environment included. If we ourselves value freedom, then our project should be liberation for all. Corona means crown. Human beings have long felt that we are the crown of creation, superior to every other form of life. Our arrogance has vindicated our might is right attitude, sanctioning and the enslaving and exploitation of others for our own short-sighted gain. Perhaps Mother Nature is only answering our demands and giving us the crown that we have insisted we deserve. Back in the 1960s, when Grace Slick, vocalist for the Jefferson Airplane, sang, you are the crown of creation and you've got no place to go, could have actually been a forewarning to us now to wake up and realise that we are homebound, all of us on this small planet. Why not seize this time of crisis as an opportunity to take this vile, ill-fitting crown and humbly bow our bare heads in awe respect and loving devotion to God and creation. So I love getting insight into Sharon's thoughts. I love her eloquent words and her actions. And I think when I read this, it makes so much sense to me. It really pulls everything together for me in one neat thread. And I guess the image that comes to my mind is an infographic that often um, comes up on the internet and it has on one side a triangle and within that triangle is a human being at the top and all other animal species below and underneath it's got written ego and then beside the triangle there's a circle and the human being is about one shape or form within and underneath 
the circle is ego, eco even. And so I feel that this teaching uh, is really transitioning us from the ego towards a frame of mind or a mindset that is ecologically based and it acknowledges our interconnection uh, and our interrelatedness and as yogis we value this teaching so deeply so let me know your thoughts about the crown of creation